how y'all doing? Uh, most of you have ever studied dinosaurs are probably a great school and you probably read about all the classics, Tyrannosaurus, Velociraptor, a Triceratops, um, Apatosaurus and all of them. Now this one may not be known to you, are you familiar with Dinochirus morificus? Okay, to be fair, most people outside, you know, you know, dinosaur aficionados and paleontologists don't even know about that one. It's not surprising, well, you know, why that is. Because um, all that's known about it is just from the pelvic girdle down to the claws and a few isolated bones. This animal was discovered back in 1965 by a Polish China, um, Mongolian expedition. It was found in Mongolia. It was dated back 70 million years, which is late Cretaceous. And from 1965 up until around 2004, to, at least to the public anyway, not much was known about it. All you have is those two long girdles, uh, you know, and the arms and the, and the claws, which gives it a very inspirational appeal about it because they're about, um, let's see, about 2.4 meters long. That's nearly 8 feet in length. Largest, they're the longest of any bipedal animal we know about. Um, and because that's all, and because of those arms, and looking at them with the shark claws, they place it in with theropods, which is a group of dinosaurs involving the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Velociraptor, and all of them. <clears throat> now, at first, okay, so what do they think that it could have been? Well, one, you know, some ideas were thrown around. For instance, uh, it could have been a very large Allosaurus-like animal, which is very long, gruesome arms. But upon closer expectations of the arm bones themselves, they seem to match the ornithomimosaurs, which are these, uh, ostr which are you know smaller ostrich-looking um, dinosaurs. You ever watched Jurassic Park? The Gallimimus of her that was running across the field and chasing Alan Grant and the kids, and then one of them gets eaten by T. Rex from the trees. And you know, think of a larger version of that. Yeah, that's just looking at the arm comparisons. Okay, so we. We got it down a little bit closer, but what did the rest of the animal look like? Well, some artists' interpretation over years try to figure, well, if it's an ornithomimosaurus, then maybe it could be just a, um, hey, uh, just a larger version of that, just a bit more robust. But how robust and what proportions? Now, again, it's only speculation. Here's one by, again, this is from James Gurney's Nanotopia. And, he, you know, this is a fantasy, but again, he tries to put in any dinosaur that actually exists, and he put in Dinochirus, and it show he has them, um, you know, sort of a dinosaur Olympics here, and they, again, they look kind of ostrich-like, a bit more robust and everything than the Struthiomimus or Gallimimus or any of the others. But, again, this is all speculation until now, about up to 2014, they published two articles. Both of them are found in Nature, Volume 515. One is um, done by Thomas R. Holtz, <clears throat> Mystery of the Horrible Hand Saws. This one's good for lay people if you're not used to the technical jargon about um, anatomical features used for um, systematic studies. But the actual study itself for that is, again, the same volume, resolving the long, um, long-standing enigma of the giant Anathomimosaur, Dinochius morificus by Lee et al. And, one of the scientists of that was Philip Curry, so if you're a big fan of him, if you're familiar with him through all documentaries throughout the 80s and 90s, there you go, that's one of the things he did. I would recommend you reading them both, because, um, you know, to Lee et al., you may not be able to understand it, but this is what a lot of um, actual peer-reviewed journals will bring about, and, you know, that gives all the technical stuff of what it has. And But Thomas R. Holtz is good for just lay people, good for summing up exactly what they found about him. For instance, now that we've found these, um, now that we found out what it looks like, and this is based on two skeletons discovered and examined. So again, we have these long arms, we have a very, very small head, very narrow. Um, it sort of, you know, from the back of the head here, and you're looking at it from above, it kind of goes out, very, gives a very n narrowing, tapering down, then sort of brings it a little shovel-like end. Not exactly what you would think of as something more ostrich-like, but it bears closer resemblance to hadrosaurs, your duckbell dinosaurs and all that. So again, that's an interesting thing. And it has no teeth that we know of. You know, it has no teeth at all. And, but despite that, we think it's omnivorous because in the fossil we did find fish remains. So maybe it just, you know, could eat whatever, opportunistic or whatever it could eat. But also another thing about it, while it is a robust animal, one of the things you wouldn't expect just by looking at two long arms is the huge neural spines, 
which if you um, take a vertebrae, it's the part that sticks out, you know, the neural spine is that one part that sticks out in the back. You got the um, oh, um, spinal cord going along this way, but then you got that one bone sticking, you know, yeah, that usually it's very small, but in some cases it sticks out way long. Um, for example, you'll, you think about the sail and Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3 and what have you. Um, Spinosaurus and Trypticus had that huge sail. Well, Dinochirus had the same thing. And so that's something, you know, that's um, not expected from that until you find the actual fossils. So here we have it. We have this one dinosaur that's been around, you know, we know about since 1965 and only now in 2014 that we have the two, you know, we have some published studies saying, hey, we just found, here's the rest of it. So, and I would suggest looking at these two below. I'll link them down below and I'll see if I can um, at least write down the, uh, the journal you can find it in, in Nature Volume 515, and, or I'll, I'll see if I can do it, put the links behind it. And I'll show a couple pictures at the end of this video to see, you know, just so, you know, you can see the claws themselves and what the animal actually looks like now that it's completed. When I first heard about this late last year, it was from Yahoo News. I was checking my email and I looked, I scrolled that, you know, little news um, column they have at random and it's a new, design, new dinosaur discovered. Okay, I looked at it. It, it, it seems like Yahoo News is about almost as trustworthy as a tabloid. And what I mean by that is when I looked through it, this is Dinochirus morificus, which is, you know, it's like, okay, I'm familiar with that. And they described what the animal looked like by, by saying that it's a cross between Barney the Dinosaur and Jar Jar Binks. I don't know, I can't remember who said that. I hope it wasn't a scientist because that, that's just kind of embarrassing. But as a reporter, he's not very, if it was a reporter, he doesn't know how to compare things. And then the nostalgia critic, Doug Walker, actually made an accurate description of Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3 is it looked like Daffy Duck got shot in the face with a shotgun. That's a bit more accurate. I don't know, maybe you could think of something. Write down below, see if you could look at this animal and give me a better description of what it looks like. You could be humorous, you could be serious. Okay, we just want to hear your thoughts. But go ahead and check out these two articles here. And, you know, if you're a dinosaur aficionado, yeah, it's always great to have, you know, books written for late people. But if you can, always look at just the original journal articles that were originally written in. Be familiar with that. That's how you're going to really find out, oh, uh, primary source-wise. Well, that's all i got to say for right now. Thank you all for watching. Y'all have a nice day.